Masks for family? Check. Garden cleanup? Check. Schedule back pain visit? Done. We've all adapted to a new way of living. Keep your health care on schedule with Johns Hopkins Medicine, where your health and safety are our highest priorities. We're ready to care for you through virtual and in-person visits across Maryland and the greater Washington region. Your health, our experts, safely caring for you. Schedule your care now. Learn more at hopkinsmedicine.org forward slash safe. Masks for family? Check. Garden cleanup? Check. Schedule back pain visit? Done. We've all adapted to a new way of living. Keep your health care on schedule with Johns Hopkins Medicine, where your health and safety are our highest priorities. We're ready to care for you through virtual and in-person visits across Maryland and the greater Washington region. Your health, our experts, safely caring for you. Schedule your care now. Learn more at hopkinsmedicine.org forward slash safe. Welcome, one and all, to the Insanely Dangerous Brett Show pod show. And according to all sources, this pod's the place to go. Because tonight, for the first time, any time that we arrange, for the first time in history, it's going to stop raining and dange. It's a rain and dange. <laughs> Hallelujah, it's a rain and dange. Amen. I'm going to go out. I'm going to let myself get. Absolutely soaking wet. But anyway, we <laughs> are an 80s and 90s retro pod show, and each week we'll be cluster fucking our way through our chosen subjects and co hosting the shoestring of a podcast with me is the enigmatic 80s encyclopedia, the bastard love child of Arn Anderson. And the ginger bloke from Mask. It's Dangerous Dange. How are you doing? How are you? I am surviving in this sweltering, sweltering heat. But other than that, <laughs> sitting here yeah. melting. My brain is melting out of my ears at the moment. Oh, I wasn't sure what you were going to say then. Well, <laughs> I know why, because my brain doesn't really, my brain isn't working. So it could say anything at this point. It could say anything. <laughs> So well, yes, one out of ten. we're living the dream. We're living, living the, the dream. dream. Yes, aren't we? Who need, who needs to go to who needs to go abroad? You know, we've got we've got uh, melt your brain out of your bum hole heat right here in Blighty. Yep, with no air, nothing at all, no breeze, no no fans, no nothing. So oh, kind of, lovely. No, even I've got a fan, dude. Bloody hell! Yeah, no fans. Just like the show, no fans. <laughs> I was gonna say I've got what I've got exactly one more fan than this show does. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing better in life than we are. So, <laughs> uh, it's the previous four episodes. That's why we've got no fans. So I went back and listened to it. I was like, oh, man, oh, oh my god, what are we fucking talking about? <sighs> Well, I mean, four episodes, I, I would imagine you maybe have done a fourth episode without me knowing about it, because I'm pretty certain this is the fourth episode, right? Oh, isn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're so engrossed in it, you've lost track of what you're doing. It's awesome. It's because the, it's because my brain's melting, it's falling out of my ass. Mm. Mm. Yes, indeed. Right. So I was just taking mm. a drink of my drink of my drink that was cold about four minutes ago and now is now is now almost like a hot drink again it's, it's lovely Ooh. yeah i'm i'm currently drinking body temperature squash that was you know <laughs> that was a lovely cold little while first, ago first quenching <laughs> yeah nothing, kind of. nothing quenches your first more than body temperature squash <laughs> Oh, that's that's a pitch and a half, isn't it? We should get John Barn to do that. Yes, yes, we should. That would be the next uh, advert for him, next to Lucas <laughs> Aid. 
and body we temperature at, squash. <laughs> we fell at the podcast and we're going into advertising. Yeah. 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 Using, using natural... someone that's doing. You saw what? Sorry? Oh, I was just going to say it's a natural follow on from failing at podcasts <laughs> to then just going into <laughs> random advertising. I think I'm pretty sure that's how most advertisers start out, right? So. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, let's let's carry on with the show. I guess we're just randomly off off the tracks there. Yeah, already, already. This is this is why we've got zero fans. Yes, yes. Sad but right. true. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank thank you, uh, thank you, Mister Hetfield. No worries. I thought you were going to start singing again. I was like, oh god, <laughs> let's not have that again. <laughs> um. No. Um, yeah, do you want to do you want to tell the uh, do you want to tell the uh, the imaginary viewers what we'll be talking about this week? <laughs> sure. So, this week we are talking about the two biggest game nation game nations. Here we go. This is the uh, <laughs> lack of this is the lack of oxygen to the brain. We're talking about the two biggest console um, companies in the world: N- Nintendo versus Sega. Oh yes, of the time, of course. So, yeah, the two biggest of the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I oh. mean, um, and well, so and in particular as well. No, I mean, you didn't get it wrong. I was just saying, you know, and in particular, um, uh, the Sega Master System and uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the, like the NES. Yeah, um, for short. <laughs> <laughs> or interesting, interesting fact: it was actually first brought out. And it was supposed. To, it was called the Famicom, which is uh, oh, interesting. The so Famicom, yes, which which stood for Family Console. Yes, not sure, not sure how many families wanted to play Duck Hunt, but sure, sure. <laughs> Always sounds and, a little bit like Fanny. Um, yeah. Fanny Con. Fanny Con. Some of these frustrated housewives <laughs> who were taking it all out on the duck. <laughs> playing duck hunt while the kids were at school and the husband's <laughs> up to work. I suppose, uh, you know, stops them from killing them, I guess. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, if you don't know, if you are young, um, you know, or, or, you know, you've been living under a bridge or under a rock or something uh, for the last, say, 30 whatever years. Um, so, yeah, that you had, like, at the time, you had Nintendo, who probably, just, you know, they edged it. They They... They did win. They've gone on to bigger and better things. They've stayed around. And Sega have kind of like over, over the years kind of like disappeared. <laughs> By the time the Sega yeah. Master System yeah. was beautiful, it, it couldn't be. I think they went out of their way to um, to be better than Nintendo um, by being completely different. So like, uh, yeah, have like the, the Sega Master System was actually a little bit more powerful and had like slightly better graphics with better colors and everything. But um, Nez were just one of these companies that went, you know what? If we target the kids, if we target the kids and making you know, games that, you know, mums and dads will buy the kids, like, we'll, you know, we'll be minted. And that's exactly what they did. And that's exactly what happened. Like, mums and dads went out and, like, they had more of a family console. Whereas I think the, um, the, uh, the Sega was for, like, more serious gamers. Yeah, I think I think as well. The Master System actually came out roughly around the same sort of time as the Nintendo. So, like, I think it was like eighty-seven. They were both released, possibly both in the UK. I'm not sure. Maybe the I think the Master System was definitely released in eighty-seven. Um, the NES was released in eighty-seven, but I'm not sure if that was the US or the UK or in Europe. So they were they oh, were yeah. dir- they were in direct competition with each other. So they were out at the same time, and they made you choose. Which one? Or if you were mega rich, maybe you'd had the chance to buy both. <laughs> greedy, greedy bastards that's if they had both. Greedy. But that's it. it didn't it never used to happen back in the day. Like I'll talk to my uh my you know, I've got one get one one game. <laughs> I've got one <laughs> friend in particular who's a real big game, right? I don't give a toss anymore. Like it sits there and it gathers dust. Um yeah. I I don't do like, you know, I don't I don't play any of the modern games at all. Like it just doesn't appeal to me really. But I've got my um, my gamer friend who um, who's constantly always got about like six consoles at any at any one time, and he'll still 
he'll still um, whack out the Nez or or the Master System um, for a bit of a giggle. Yeah. Um, he, he he says he he reckons there's nothing between them. Um, I owned a yeah. Nez, and I had I had use regular use of a Master System. And as much as I loved my Nez, I think I'm I'm actually a Master System fan. Yeah, well, I mean, to be, to be honest with you, I've never actually had the privilege. I've never had the privilege, easy for me to say, um, of owning or playing on a NES before. Never played on a NES. Never owned no. a NES. No, I, I have. In, I have, in fact, played on a Master System. Um, luckily enough, but yeah, never, never had that. Uh, never had that opportunity. Just never, never came around. Dude, 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 this is your lucky day. I have an original <laughs> NES with box, like, all, wow. like in pristine, well, it was in pristine condition until little one got, um, the up box, all over it. Is. Oh, right. No, Millie, <laughs> Millie got, um, purple nail varnish all over, you know, all over the, the styrofoam, like, casing oh, the on styrofoam. the inside. But you know, it's, otherwise it's in mint condition. I've got controllers. I've got, and I've got. It's only one game. I, I, I don't know. I, I think I bought a couple off of like eBay or something, but I can only seem to find one. But I've got Mario Brothers. Oh, Mario Brothers, one of the original yeah. games. I think, yeah, I think it was the original game that came out, was it? Wasn't it? Mario Brothers or Super Mario Brothers? I'm almost completely sure that it. That I'm pretty sure that um, it came it came with it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That is the I think that was the original sort of pack. That I, I mean, even though I never owned it, I never I always saw it in the Argos catalog, you know, advertised. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, I was I was kind of disappointed. I was kind of hoping you'd tell me you had Duck Hunt and the gun as well. I mean, I, that would have been amazing. Oh, yeah. Don't think I didn't moan at my parents about that, but now and nowadays I don't seem to have like the uh, disposable income. But like it's like mm, it's like mm, I've got to put flooring, or on the other hand, I could buy I could buy a laser gun for the NES, which yes. I can't use on modern TVs because yeah. it, <laughs> they're not they're not manufactured like. Old because no, oh, here you go. Yeah, the the NES actually only works on, as far as I'm aware, only actually works on an old TV, old style <laughs> TV. Yeah, because of all the. Won't, it won't work on modern TV, so I don't. <laughs> you either have to have an old TV or you have to have some sort of converter. So yeah. even if I did buy the gun and everything and get Duck Hunt, um, you wouldn't be able to play it. No, I just rem- yeah, that's just remind me. Oh, balls. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I've seen on Amazon, they started doing like, well, not started. They've probably been going a while, but they've been doing those retro consoles for a while. Um, I think you can get a retro, probably a retro SNES, but I don't think you can get a retro um, NES. Yeah. Yeah. No, I saw that. No, no, no. I think it was something like if you, if you get a new one, yeah, this is it. If you get a new NES, um, obviously it looks like the old one. It's just a big old grey, uh, light grey, dark grey box. It, if, if, you, if you're over 30, then you look at this thing, you're like, oh my God, look at this. And to you, in your mind, it's kind of like, it's a little bit like that gold statue at the beginning of Indiana Jones. You're like, oh, yes. it should be on the plinth or something. It's beautiful. If you're, oh, if you're under a certain age, you'll look at it and you'll go, what is this piece of shit? You know, you it won't fill you with any sort of like you know awe at all. It's, it doesn't look brilliant, but um, it, the, no. the new ones will still look. The new ones will still have the same look, um, but they come with thirty games built in. Okay, I mean, this one I'm looking at on Amazon, where it's actually it's a mini classic games console, which is basically in the style of a NES. We've built in 620 games. I mean, that just screams. <laughs> that just screams like it's going to be one of those fake products. Because if you look at the price, it's 26 quid. It's like, really? That just seems too good to be true. It, it's not it, actually called a mini it, Nintendo. And it's it's, it's obviously it, yeah. an import as well. It looks, I don't know, it, it looks suspect to me. I mean, it, you, you can you can find a classic Super 
Nintendo system on there for £186, which is um, a bit more <laughs> a bit more realistic, <laughs> but um, it's like 20, 20 games. But yeah, no, I never... I, I think if the only way I uh, wanted to do that, then by the sounds of it, is buy a NES and an old TV and, and play on a NES. But yeah, and back to the original point of me saying I've never played on a NES and played on the Master System, but uh, I don't think I was that interested in too many too many things. I think I always got drawn towards the uh, Sega games. It looked a bit more interesting than the Nintendo yes. games, in my opinion. But um, no, just- I think... Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Sorry. I know. I can't even remember what I was going to say. Now, I just think I just was going to say. I think I was. I think I was going to say I was more drawn towards the Mega Drive at the time, but that was after you know that came after the Master System. So, um, I think I played on the Master System like years after it had already been released. Um, I think a, yeah. I think a friend of mine who I went to school with, and I think I had like the old athletics game on there, like the Olympics or whatever they call it. Um, track track and field or something <laughs> do the 100 meters or which uh which was fine after a while but you could only do like one race a day because your fingers would just like cramp up and fuck knows how you <laughs> would do the, the hurdles because you needed that extra finger to be able to jump over the hurdles while running it was like wow the bit oh excuse me the bit that i didn't like about track and field is that um you'd i'd go around my friend's house and we played track and field and he had this, and it seemed to be foolproof. What he'd do, he'd take his shoe off, he'd take his sock off, he'd put his sock on his hand, and then he'd run his, to save himself from getting a blister, this is what he was, you know, he'd put the, the sock over the top, and then he'd run his run his knuckle over the two buttons very, very quickly. And, you know, <laughs> if he did that, then he, he, what, he won the race every single time. There I am, like a sucker, doing it with two fingers. He's there doing yeah. it with, with one knuckle, but clearly he's learned from another time where he's played so much of it. He actually gave himself a blister on his knuckle from, uh, from oh. playing track and field. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty hardcore. He must have loved that game so much, the dedication to it. <laughs> it was just like, yeah, I'm going to bloody my hands. So did he come in like he'd been in like fights and stuff and like he'd end up having to either say, yeah, I've been in a fight or no, no, I've been, uh, been on the old mass system track and field to try no, and... Uh, he just looked like he had a boil on his finger. Oh, okay. I thought maybe yeah, he had, no, would have had like bloody, <laughs> bloody knuckles or anything like that, like he'd been fighting or something. He'd come in like You're Phil like, Mitchell really? the next day. <laughs> the, but the blister built up very, very quickly, and then um, and he and um, and he quickly stopped because you know he just kind of looked at it and freaked out, and then he didn't. He turned it off and he didn't go on it for the rest of the day. <laughs> and then that's when he had that's when he had the uh, the epiphany. I'm sure I'm sure like thousands of other kids had the same epiphany to put the sock over the knuckle and, and do do it. But um, he was the first one out of us. Love. I mean, um, I, see, I was trying to think of other games. Then, like, I'm trying to think of the games that I had because I never actually had track and field. I I I didn't actually I couldn't get along with it. Um, no, that's I right. you know, just, but, um, like I like because um, they had cartridges. Do you remember the, the, that they were cartridges? Yes. Well, I mean, nowadays everything's disc or download. Yes. The there's these great big massive plastic discs that, at the time, if the game didn't load, you take them out and you blow on them and then put them back in. That yes. you know to get rid of the dust. But actually, you were not meant to do that. I only found that out recently. Do you, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I heard about that, and I also saw that recently as well, where there's a warning sign on, like the underside of it, saying "Do not blow on these discs <laughs> or these cartridges." <laughs> sorry, do not blow on them. <laughs> so it's like, oh wow, well, bit fucking late to, to find that out now, isn't it? I was like a generation <laughs> of pe- kids just like blowing on their discs when they stop working. Or keep saying discs, cartridges, man. God damn it, my brain. <laughs> Um, when the when the game would either freeze or whatever the problem was or wouldn't load, so they would just you know take advice. I mean, I'm assuming it worked. Um, blowing on the That's old cartridge. It. I so don't understand what, what the problem was. was. I mean, not to. Did it, was it like if you spat on it, it like and if you blew on it, you might spit on it, and the game Maybe. might stop. Is that the theory behind it? It's possible, possible. Yeah, good thinking. I don't think of that. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, there was. Um, they had, they had they great selection great. of games. Remember? Go on, go on. 
No, no, no. I was just going to say that just that they had a great selection of games, which I think they ended up like transitioning over to this the Mega Drive as well. I mean, some of the some of the games I wanted to play were things like um, obviously I played Sonic the Hedgehog because you know when you have a awesome. anything to do with Sega, you have to get like the main characters game. But you know things like the Altered Flagship, Beast, yeah, yeah. Oh. Altered Beast, yeah. Golden Axe. Um, Streets of Rage and Shinobi were like probably like they they you look at the covers of the actual you know they were obviously they were made in cartridges the games but like the games came in well they definitely did for the uh, Mega uh, Mars system they came in these big ass plastic cases that were like heavier than the actual and the instruction manuals were always like like a mini novel there was that that (laughs) proper thing (laughs) <laughs> it's like 20 nobody, languages but nobody really read that did they they just kind no. of like played and played played the game so but they always i don't know i think i just thought the i thought the cover of all the games for sega will look more interesting they look cooler than than the, the nes games Older. in my for me yeah like especially those ones mentioned like altered beast and golden axe you know you, proper yeah hardcore it, plus you know you you're aiming at a target audience who loved he-man and all that sort of thing and they they just like you oh know, yeah that's a good point yeah stick, stick on some like burly chested guy with an axe and you know <laughs> kid eyes light up they're like oh my god i don't know who that is but i want it i want to find out what this is about so yeah, um, yeah like ghouls and ghosts as well that was another one yeah yeah they they, they all uh they were uh, interesting games. Hi, everyone. We just want to make sure that if you want to get in touch with the show, if you have any shared experiences or have met an 80s or 90s celebrity even, then please get in touch. How do they do that, Dangerous? Well, I'll tell you how they do that. And make sure you have a pen and paper ready. So the, Im- uh, the email even is T I R. No, hang on. Let's, let's get this again. This is what happens. This is what happens when you. <laughs> oh Christ! <laughs> Good, cut this bit out. All right. Okay. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you how you do that. Make sure you have a pen and paper ready. So the address is T I D R P inbox and that's all one word at gmail.com uh, it's t-i-d-r-p inbox at gmail.com that is a mouthful and i'm sure it'll get easier as it goes along i'm sure it won't because that was a real pain in the ass to set up and i'm not techie <laughs> but we'll do our best to get through them all and we will see if, you, if we can incorporate them into the show, if we can use them, you know, if they're to do with the subject that we want to talk about or that we have been talking about. Any kind of questions whatsoever, go for it. Please get in touch. You ready to get back to it, dude? Sure, let's do it. Lunch in the park, check. Hand sanitizer, check. Cancer screening, done. We've all adapted to a new way of living. Keep your health care on schedule with Johns Hopkins Medicine, where your health and safety are our highest priorities. We're ready to care for you through virtual and in-person visits across Maryland and the greater Washington region. Your health, our experts, safely caring for you. Schedule your care now. Learn more at hopkinsmedicine.org forward slash safe. Okay, welcome back. Um, right, second half. I just before we go any further, I just like we left on uh, we left it on like Ghouls and Ghosts and Golden Axe and like the the, the SMS so, like so, Sega Master Systems. It's going to be SMS, so I don't have to keep saying Sega yes. Master <laughs> SMS, not um, text message. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I think I, I loved all that. We also had Mortal Kombat or Mortal Wombat, as I used to call it. Um, <laughs> Mortal Kombat, yes, indeed. Um, the game yeah, that had Earthworm Jim. Like, oh yeah, I loved Earthworm Jim. But like the thing about like, um, I mean that 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 actually spawned. Was it the cartoon or was it the other way around? I can't remember. But um, I think the game spawned the cartoon. Yeah. But like it, it, it had it, when it came out, everyone went absolutely batshit about the about the graphics. 
Um, yeah. Looking back now, it's actually, it's not that the graphics are great. They're just taking thousands of pictures of yeah. people dressed up in costumes. And then it's kind of, it's basically animation. Yeah. And um, but, so like, I can't help, like, I, you know, like, they say, oh, yeah, don't need your heroes and everything, yeah, because it's, yeah, it's, it's a letdown. It's kind of like, do go back and play <laughs> childhood games. You know, when they say, oh, the graphics were amazing. I went, but I was absolutely fucking gutted. It's like, um, <laughs> you could, like, on the current one, I think you've got some stupid choice of about, like, 20, 25 um, characters you can, you know, to play from. I think in the old one, you only had, like, six or four or so you know yes. it wasn't a lot but i but having said that i I'm, i must have played it to death All right what we you know um you know, video rental shops they used to do i don't know if they still do them because like i said i'm not a gamer but do they, do they still have video rental shops like do you go into do you go in there and can you just, like, borrow a game for like the weekend I don't think I don't think they can. I mean, I, I think like blockbusters were the last big blockbusters. That were like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 is there handing out games. Block, <laughs> the blockbuster video uh, was the last one. Um, I don't know if I don't know if game places like um, CEX or um, you know other places like <laughs> Game used to do it or not i'm not sure i never really took many, took any notice of it i don't think they did they may have done um yeah, it's like video solos um oh, and video. there's another one well no it's a good one wasn't it <laughs> oh, name no. dropping oh, like, around the corner around the corner from us we had like um uh there was um millbrook video and yeah. um it's like yeah you know, slap bang in the middle of what a friend of mine called it calls it mill bronx <laughs> um, so slap bang in the middle of this horrible, um, this horrible estate. You had Millbrook video. I don't know how the bars on the windows so didn't get didn't get broken into <laughs> overnight and stuff, or like ram raided or anything. Plasty but joint. I used to go there. Yeah, used to go there. And I used to. Mum used to get me my um, like rent me like NES games and whatever. And yeah. um, I think actually Mortal Kombat did end up actually being on the NES. It must have been because I don't think I had the. The chance to um, play on the on the Sega. I'm not sure. Oh, I tell you what, come on, here we go. If you know, get in touch with the show. All right. So anything that me and Danger are talking about, you know, if anything doesn't ring true, if, if we're talking bullshit and we're we're just making we're <laughs> pulling stuff out of our asses as, as well as the brains that are coming out of our ass, our melted brains. Right. If you know, get in touch with the show. Okay. Uh, we've <laughs> said the we said the email address, but we'll um, we'll say it again. We've got it's uh, T. I D R P inbox. That's all one word at gmail.com. Okay, so T I D R P, as in the insanely dangerous retro pod show. T I D R P inbox at gmail.com. Um, yeah, no, I, I love that. Going to go into the, the, video, the video rental shop and picking up uh, a game for the weekend. I bloody, I absolutely bloody love that. Like, um, when I, I did get a chance to play uh, on the SMS on a regular basis, I remember going in and getting Moonwalker for the weekend. Oh, Moonwalker. <laughs> yes. What? Never, that's what another game I wanted to play. Up. Yeah, that was the game I wanted to play, Moonwalker, because it's like, how can you make a game from... I mean, the movie was... <sighs> I mean, I'm, I'm a Michael Jackson fan, but I mean, the movie was more like a like a 15, 20 minute short story. And then the rest of it is like music videos. But um, I was like, yeah, I never really understood. I never really got to play that game. Maybe you, was it, were you playing Michael Jackson in the game or was he a playable character? I, just, I don't know. Yeah, you're just run, like running around. Um, it, you, I think. <laughs> You know how like all the SNE, all the sorry, all the NES, uh, uh, NES and uh, SMS games, they would take like a film. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you've ever played like, say, uh, oh, you bear with me whilst I go on. I you know, I really, I take a long time to explain it. I had Terminator <laughs> Two, right? Okay. Like Terminator Two from NES, and you can see it in about like, uh, and you play, uh, you play, 
um, sorry, you're playing as the T-800. You're playing as Arnie in the second film, protecting John Connor. But there, there are a shit ton of points in this game where you're like, nah, nah, this wasn't in the film. So like, nah, is <laughs> Sega just used to take massive liberties and just go, well, no way we can make a game out of this. Oh, I know. <laughs> Let's just add in this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Where they get, like, uh, okay. so, and, like, again, it's, it's the same kind of thing where I think, like, so, like, um, you had these things that used to attack Michael Jackson. Um, God, it's so long ago now. Um, I don't know. I want to say, like, you know, um, evil looking musical notes or blobs that are coming <laughs> along the ground. Like, might you would do dance moves to kill them. So, like, a little spin would kill some enemies and other ones, like a little, like, Michael Jackson, <laughs> that, like, little, little kick would, like, you kill the other enemies. Yeah, it's basically, it's the same. It's just, it could have been any, it could have been any fucking game. If you, you take out, might yet yeah, this, uh, this little, uh, guy in a white suit and a white fedora out of there, and you put in someone else, and it could have been any other game. No, okay. Okay. So it could have been, like, uh, Streets of Rage or something. So just uh, got copied the game. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I think a lot. I think a lot of the gameplay graphics back then probably they weren't powerful enough to actually make it anything like the films. It's like nowadays you get you know games that are like films themselves, but back then I I don't think they had much to work with in that sense. <laughs> like trying I, to I get into, mm, into get into a it. film. I would have forgiven them. I would have forgiven them the poor graphics if they just followed the storyline. <laughs> just fair enough. Well, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the games were very similar. They'd all be like scrolling platform type games. Yeah. There weren't, you know, yeah. there wasn't really much they could do with it other than, I guess, you were like kind of going on a quest like Sonic. And you're collecting collectibles and stuff to uh, attack the bad guys with. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had some room to work with. If you think about like Streets of Rage and Double Dragon on like two different plat- uh, two different um, consoles, they they were quite similar in the way you were like you know it was a rolling platform, but you could go um, away you know closer towards the screen or you know away from the screen. Yeah, yeah you had that. You know, you can go backwards and forwards. Like, sometimes it's stationary. Sometimes it moves for you. You, you had that. Then you also had other ones. Where um, it was, uh, you know, a uh, bird's eye view. You know, so you okay. could have like, mixed yeah. all this. You could have mixed all this thing. Um, yeah, I just, it just, it would just do like weird things, like Star Wars. Here you go. There's another game that I rented. Star, Star Wars. Wars. What a terrible game! Like at one point, you have to, <clears throat> excuse me, as Luke, you have to. Um, what is it? Oh, what are those things? They, they sell all the droids, the Jawas. You have to get yeah. into the Jawas little, like, um, I don't know what you'd call it. What do they, what's that thing called? I need a proper, proper hardcore Star Wars fan to tell me what <laughs> the thing that the Jawas uh, roll around in. Um, let's just call it for the sake of it until um, a Star Wars fan writes and complains in. Um, they're a massive tank. Uh, now, yeah. at no point in the film does Luke decide to, like, he's going to gonna climb up, jump in, and then go in and like kill a load of Jawas with a blaster. Yeah. But in the game, that's exactly what he it does. It's like, why? You why are you taking one of the one of the cinematic masterpieces of the last you know fifty sixty years and, and bastardizing it? <laughs> what makes you think that you can fucking perfect? Like, you know, you know what? I really like Star Wars, but I tell you what, he needed. It needed it needed a massacre. It needed a white guy going around with a gun and shooting a load of ethnic people. That's exactly <laughs> what this game, this this child's game needs. It needs yeah, it needs not needs a white guy shooting everyone. Massacre, fucking massacre. <laughs> and like just that's that's what used to annoy me about eighties and nineties games. Is like, you can forgive the graphics. That's fine. You know, kids don't really care. It's like you know, back in the day, if you you saw the graphics, you go, "Cool, bloody hell! It looks it looks so lifelike." You go back now, I was like, "No, that looks like a piece of shit." But <laughs> so you could have forgiven the graphics if only they just followed the storyline and didn't didn't go in you know, their own artistic liberties. 
Yeah, I mean, I wonder how much I wonder how much input the um, the film studio makers had with the games as well. Do you reckon that? I'm wondering if they just didn't care and they just went, you know, I would, you know, I can't imagine George Lucas like having much of a say or giving much of a shit over what the game's going to be like. I mean, unless maybe he was, maybe he was there in like production meetings of the game, and he was like, "Yeah, no, we need more of Luke shooting." ethnic people come on get them in there <laughs> couldn't do this in the movie so get it in the game you just you just don't know do you i think if i think if he was there i think he was too busy counting 100s in his wallets yeah yeah they go like like, like 255 256 george i oh, fucking have lost count <laughs> this game is going to sell me how much money i don't care what you put in there <laughs> anything anything Oh, we have dinosaurs, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no problem. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> and then, of course, like, in the early 90s, the Master System and the NES, the 8-bit consoles, were, I guess, obsolete at that point because out came the 16-bit me- Mega Drive for the Sega. Yeah, 16 and- and the, and the oh, SNES, yeah. the Super Nintendo, aptly named the SNES uh, for Nintendo. So, you know... They yeah, both both of them were you know at the peak because obviously there was I think they were still selling games on the NES and the Master System even mm. though yeah even though they were making the games for the Mega Drive and the SNES and I think a lot of the games you would get on the original NES and Master System would eventually be you know adapted for the Mega Drive which again the graphics went up again they went up another level so um, yeah yeah they did yeah and of course the uh, the two main characters for Nintendo and and for Sega, Sonic and uh, Mario. I think Mario had like the most spin-off games on the SNES, whereas Sega tried to follow suit with some, you know, other kind of games. I think it was Sonic Scramble or something random, but I think Mario. Oh dear. (laughs) Yeah. I think Mario hit the home run with like Mario Kart and, um, uh, Mario oh, Stars and things like that. Um, yeah, I think definitely the SNES had the edge on in the in the market for over the Mega Drive. But again, I I always thought the Mega Drive games, as with the Master System ones, the covers of them just made them look cooler, cooler. Yeah, so, um, yeah absolutely, man. I mean, well, you got like you've got this thing where it, it you've got um, it goes from the master system over to the mega drive a little bit. Whereas um, there was a bit of a change in that. So like you had like Mario on the NES and the SNES, but like on the uh, master system over to the mega drive, you had like the, the changeover. You had like, do you remember Alex kid? They yeah. went like Alex kid when he's a bit of a Mario ripoff. I think even though he's brilliant in his own right, he, yeah. he they, these were the, the games that used to like um, challenge each other. Mario two, what they released at the same time as Mario 2 was a game called Psycho Fox. Right, okay. You ever heard of that? I um, don't think so. Was that yeah, a well, Psycho Fo- no, Psycho Fox can fucking suck it, honestly. <laughs> like, it, they, like, I think they just kept on going until they got to Sonic. Uh, so oh. Sonic wasn't like, you know, a, brain, you know, a genius idea that they had um, and, it, and it developed organically like... Um, because it he wasn't Mario wasn't always called Mario. He's called Jumpman. And he was on Donkey Kong, <laughs> yes. which is another which is another game I had. I also had Donkey Kong, and that was shit hot. I love that game. It's, yeah. it's such it, they, they they changed from an arcade game to a a console game really really well. That was done really well. But um, so he changed organically, whereas Sonic I think was just kind of like I wouldn't say shoehorned in because it was amazing graphics, wasn't it? It was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and of course they had. Uh, I think on the, uh, I think they had on the SNES and the NES. Of course, the uh, the Zelda Zelda games were getting big on uh, for Nintendo as well. I, I mean, yeah, I never they had really, it on NES. Yeah, I'll tell you how really... I know they had it on NES because the cartridge was gold. Oh, I think I remember seeing that when it came out. I mean, they were. They were really popular. The Zelda games. I think mean, they're they're a bit more traditional, away from the traditional platform games. They're more like platform mm. puzzle games. 
a little bit like a PC game almost. Yeah. 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 I think the only Zelda game I ever played, which was on the GameCube, but that was obviously years, years, years later. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, I, I was always, for, for me, I was always drawn towards Sega and, and Mega Drive. I always felt like, I don't know, I f- felt like Sega made made their games a little bit more darker and a bit more, not 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 so less family orientated or family orientated because I mean I remember you know they had to be family orientated if they're going to release like Echo the Dol- Dol- Echo the Dolphin and bloody <laughs> Mickey's Castle of Illusions or whatever, but I just felt like they had they, they had the market on like really dark games or all, all the Shinobi yeah, games yeah. and all that sort exactly. of thing. Yeah. yeah. The older gamers, the more serious ones, who are who are playing for like you know playing because they want to be good at it, not just because you know they want to like you know um, you know they've got to like kill some time. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you weren't you weren't playing Golden Axe or like that with your with your family gathered around. You, you know, <laughs> I think the definitely Nintendo marketed their audience towards proper like family units who you know, love to uh, play games, really, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, some of the Mega Drive and stuff were, like, aimed at kids who were, like, loners in their basement who just, like, <laughs> enjoyed <laughs> enjoyed the uh, the dark side of those m- types of games. It's funny you say that, Jane, because in contrast, right, I had um, Tetris on the NES. Yeah. And yes. uh, like Wednesday, like Wednesday or Thursday evenings, my grandparents used to come around. My nan couldn't get enough Tetris. Oh right. my! Like she, like we just we put it on just like once, just to you know, see how much she would, you know, to see how much she could like, get to grips with it. In my mind, she was a fossil. But then I did, I crunched <laughs> the numbers, and she was like, she's like I don't know, like mid forties or something. Yeah. Um, but of course, like having never grown up with anything like this, she was like learning on the go. And actually, in the end, she got like she was shit to hot in Tetris, like really seriously, seriously good. And we stopped putting it on for a laugh, and we would put it on for like half an hour, forty-five minutes, and see how yeah. far she could get. She yeah. was bloody amazing at it. So, in that sense, you've got a grandparent um, surrounded by her family. Mm. Most of us cheering her on. Some of us laughing at her when she would, <laughs> like you know, put the the wrong, you know, like you've got the shapes about to go in and then all of a sudden you press a button and it changes yeah. the direction. Of, it's like, no! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you've been building that Tetris button, yeah. all the way up, all the way up, and all you need is a four, you know, yeah. like a, a straight one to go down the side and then you change its <laughs> shape right at the last second. <laughs> yeah. No! no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if but, you've yeah, ever played Tetris, you know that pain. I have, I have indeed. Yeah. Shape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah some... that was that was the difference, wasn't it? Totally. I, I know what you mean. I mean, um, I mean, if you, I've, I've got like Simpson, um, uh, yeah, the Simpsons, Bart versus the Space Mutants, and that was like such a bright coloured, silly game. Um, and then you like, you know, you, it just, it doesn't, it just doesn't compare. To like something like um, ghouls and ghosts, or no. um, you know, like Outrun. I mean, we, we haven't even talked about the the racing games. I oh, don't well. remember. I don't remember many racing games at all. But I loved um, Outrun on the Master System. But you like, hmm. we said we're going to go on to like Mega Drive and, and SNES. But my yeah, no. my one real. My one, uh, the, the two games I, I I really remember on the SNES, and I don't yeah. remember any more, are Aladdin. <laughs> and yeah. um, my mate had Aladdin. I just went round, and I think I like, I should have died about twenty times, but like things just, I just, I just fluked my way through about <laughs> eight levels. Like just every time, I just every time I looked like I was about to die, I was going to jump into a hole. Something would come out the hole and save me. Ages, but so I remember Aladdin, but more than anything, and I think loads of people will agree with me, especially since they re released it as well. Goldeneye, Goldeneye, yeah, did they have that on the snares? I remember they having it on the uh, N64. Yeah. Oh, and Star Fox. Sorry, I forgot about Star Fox. Star Fox, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, again, there is, um, I can't, there is. 
Star Fox, I think it was very family friendly type gameplay, I think. Um, yeah, for me, I was always um, the Mega Drive for me meant one one thing, and that was playing sensible soccer. Which I don't <laughs> think it seemed to be uh, only exclusive to the Mega Drive at the time. Um, I think obviously other platforms carried it, but um, I know the I think like um, the Amiga had it and things like that, but um, it, it was never it was never on the NES. Nintendo didn't own it, and it was like yes. Sensible soccer was just like the ultimate football game back then, in my opinion. It was just, it had real life, real, real name players. You had a whole host of teams to choose from. It was just epic gameplay. And it was, yeah, uh, the goal, the goalie diving to try and save the ball was always great. And the, the really crappy replays, but <laughs> sensible uh-huh. soccer, it was just the, <laughs> the ultimate football, football game on, on that Sega had. I don't know if you this, like, this is the thing that fast it, it's good that you bring that up actually because that didn't that spawn didn't that turn into like pro evolution oh, I really don't know to be honest I've got a funny um, feeling that turned into pro evolution which rivaled FIFA which made FIFA that like, they looked at the cells and the gameplay and they went oh shit man like Pro, pros kicking our ass, and it really kicked the developers of FIFA up the ass. I think that's EA Sports or whatever it is. And now, like we've got, like FIFA is now like it's just it's just a whore giant of of, um, yeah. of football games. It, it, it is the it is the attention whore fame giant of football games. Like you know, I don't think anyone plays on any other game now. It's like it's FIFA. And that's it. And people base their real world football knowledge based on FIFA. And I know I'm not kind of getting away from your point, but like that is, you know, it's so bloody huge now. And I think that's only really possible because of the super, super playable gameplay. If that's correct English, I don't know. Again, brain melting of, of, um, okay. of sensible soccer. And yeah. sensible soccer was it was the one, wasn't it? It was the it's the granddaddy of them all. It that's the yeah, that's the one that really started like the modern football game. Yeah, yeah, I would say it was um definitely uh definitely something up there that um I think uh I think like Codemasters or something like that acquired the licensing or something like that and um but yeah it was it was definitely um something that the the other games took leaf out of took a leaf out of when they uh, started developing their games. Um, I was just trying to have a look to see. Yeah, it was definitely because I was I wanted to make sure it was on the Mega Drive because I remember playing it on there, and it was a uh, Sensible Soccer International Edition on uh, on the Mega Drive. Uh, yeah, ah, oh, good old Sensible Soccer. I remember, I remember it well. <laughs> For me, that was the that was the ultimate. But um, I mean, there were, there were loads of games. Obviously, I never got to play because um, I was a massive gamer. Um, I would have it, I would either be around a friend's house or whatever and play on whatever games they had. But there was there was a ton of games that I just never got to play. I would just like I'd just be sat looking at the Argos catalog or looking at the covers, going, "Wow, but that looks that looks amazing." Um, but like you say, whether or not, whether or not, if you buy it and play it now, would it live up to the expectations? Because I've never played it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you built it up so much in your mind and everything. Going back to um, if you played it now, would it be the same? I actually need a little bit of. I'm just hoping. I don't even care if there's if there's like a handful of people listening to this show, and they're going to tell us that. When we're a bunch of knobheads. Like, I don't, I don't it's, gone from, it's gone from zero I to a half. <laughs> I need, I need some help because I've tried to research a game, right? Um, uh, we, uh, we're trying to um, add it on the NES, and what it was, it was a skeleton of a skeleton of a knight, a brave, a famous knight, and it he this. Skeleton was resurrected by 
oh God, I, 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 God knows what. But he's, he's resurrected for the purposes of good and going out. And I think it's like on Halloween and defeating right. all these evil spirits. And I cannot remember the bloody name of it that saved my life. It really cheeses me off. I was, it was called Medieval. I swore it's called Medieval. It's just like it's a skeleton in armor swinging this great big bloody broadsword at you know, like haunted scarecrows and um, jack o' lanterns and stuff. Um, and I cannot, I Google the shit out of it. And I can't find it. So if you're talking about, please contact the show. Um, because I've been going crazy trying to figure this out for the last. 10, 15 years. And no matter what I put into Google, and no matter who I ask, no one seems to have a clue about what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> so, um, yeah, skeleton, armour, might be called medieval in the UK, or... Oh, I don't know. What? <laughs> it's all very vague, and it's all very... It's, it's a very... It's a poor, poor ending... To what has been a very good podcast. <laughs> have you ever? Have you ever tried? Have you ever tried just like googling all NS, NES games and just seeing if like a list comes up or pictures yeah. come up of every NES game ever made and that it's in there? Have you ever tried that or still no? Have, luck? But I may have to. I may have to give it a go with um, like revolt. I don't know some sort of like. With new parameters or something, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to think of something else. Right. We've got to take a break now because we are going to run out of time. But when we take a break, uh, we will be, well, after the break even, we'll come back. We're going to do the quiz. and We're going to see just how much Dange has uh, retained from today's show, how much he knew anyway in, in our quiz. Okay, so we will see you in a bit so let's say you're into yoga or pilates or maybe you dabble in gymnastics like me either way you know being flexible is key to doing what you love that's why smoothie king created this stretch and flex smoothie for people like us with whole fruits and organic veggies plus type 2 collagen make it part of your daily fitness routine to support flexibility and joint health so try the stretch and flex smoothie and tart cherry or pineapple kale order online today for pickup or delivery Smoothie King, rule the day. Back again. Welcome back. Right, it is time for the quiz. Whether it, whether it's um, let's get dangerous or danger J- danger games, danger Jane. Yeah, we could yeah, or danger Jane or danger Jane. challenge dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, yeah, that's another thing that you can do if you want to suggest an actual. If you want to suggest an actual name for the quiz, go crazy, and we'll um yeah if if we get a, if we get a good one, we'll throw it in there, right? Um, oh, and also remember last last episode we said if you want to do a quick ten or twenty second song for the quiz, if we get a good one, we'll use it, right? But um, each week, uh, if you've been listening, you'll know that we are I'm the quiz master, and Danger and I will talk about the subject, and then at the end. I'll quiz him on his recall and his knowledge and just, you know, when I call him the, the stoic uh, 80s and 90s encyclopedia, off podcast, he really is, and he knows everything. On podcast, he, go, he, he generally tends to get about seven or eight out of ten. So, which makes him, you know, it makes him the king of the pod. You know, he gets more right than he gets wrong, but he's never got the ten out of ten prize that means he will win the super special mega awesome prize so we're hoping you're over rubbing it in going to encourage me <laughs> i was just about to say hopefully he'll get it this week hopefully he'll get 10 out of 10 but we'll no, see we'll see i doubt it <laughs> that's it that's it positivity that's what that's that's what <laughs> that's i love right. about you you're always that's so right. positive yeah. Yeah. not gonna happen <laughs> that's it oh, you'd be a great coach wouldn't you I mean, I'd yeah. like to think that you're going to win, but you're probably not. Yeah, who's going to win? They are. We're knackered. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Here we go. Question one. Ninten the Nintendo Entertainment System was released in the UK in which year? I want to say 87. Correct. Oof, that's a massively long pause there. Yeah, dramatic effect. Actually, I can't read my own writing, so I was just making sure that... <laughs> that's why there's a long pause. <laughs> <laughs> Do right, question two. Mario debut in which NES game? That was Donkey Kong. Correct. Question three. Now, this is this is if you've done your research, because uh, we didn't talk about this during the show. Now, I had one of these, but I, I nagged and I moaned my mum and dad for one of these, but I couldn't actually get the bloody thing to work. So oh. I, I had friends. I had friends um, who who had one, and they theirs worked perfectly. But the, on the Nintendo Entertainment System, on the NES, there was a machine that allowed you to cheat on almost any game. Do um, what? Do you know what it was called? I do not. To be honest, I did not research that part. I do not know. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to? Uh... Do you want to take a, a, a wild stab in the dark? <laughs> yeah, sure. Let me just Google it. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was called the Gazinator. The Gazinator. No, that's the name of my penis, actually. <laughs> oh, but, <right>. uh, <laughs> I always get those two confused. <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. Um, yeah. It was called the Game Genie. Ah, oh, the Game Genie. Now you say it, it does ring a bell. An alarm uh, bell. I think I think we've set a record today for um, saying this about a thousand times. What does NES stand for? <laughs> uh, well, I'm pretty sure you said it a minute ago. It's Nintendo Entertainment System. Please. I just thought I'd throw you a bone. Thanks. <laughs> um. Who was who was Sonic the Hedgehog's most famous opponent? Oh crap! It wasn't him. I know that. No, it wasn't. <sighs> it was. It wasn't Steve O. Crap. No. <sighs> was it Doctor Robotnik? Yeah, we go. <laughs> Nice Googling. Well I done. Can, no, I was not Googling. I was. I could picture it. I could picture him. <laughs> I just couldn't remember his name to begin with. I was going to say, I was going to say Dr. Evil to begin with. I was like, no, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Slightly different. Yeah. Um, all right, number six. Um, the flagship, the flagship beat-em-up game for Sega was Mortal Kombat, but what which game for the NES was its direct rival? Uh for the NES. Um I want to say Street Fighter. Correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You got five out of six. So you're not going to get the super special mega awesome prize, but, but <sighs> you're still you're still in with a chance of being king of the pod. Okay, okay. Which pop star had his own game? <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to say because we spoke about it, but I don't know if it was Moonwalker. So I'm going to say Michael Jackson. Correct. I, you know, honestly, I didn't think that was going to. I didn't think that subject was. Um, I didn't intend to bring it up, and then I said it. I was like, nah. nah. It, it's not all about knowledge. Some of it is really cool, and I can't. Yeah, I don't. Want to. 
Thanks for bringing right, it up. It's, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Right. The, <laughs> the, the SNES was a 16 bit. How much, how much power did the NES have? That was eight bits. Eight shave and a haircut. Eight bits. <laughs> right. ING, or readers of, uh, of, of uh, ING, voted the Sega Master System in at, was it a, a, a below, funnily enough, below the NES by quite a long way. The NES was the, num- was the number one console. But the okay. Sega Master System was quite far behind it. Was it, was it, 15th place, 18th place, or 20th place? Oof. So quite far behind it. 15, yes. 18, or 19. Uh, 15, 18, or 20. I'm going to say 15. 15. It was, it was 20th. Uh, I should have gone with the lowest. That's crazy. I can't believe they'd put it in 20th. They obviously weren't fans. Okay. Question 10. Question 10. Which, and again, you know what? You know, this is not dramatic pause. This (laughs) is that I can't read my handwriting. Oh, yeah. No, I can read it now. (laughs) Right. (laughs) The. I think we've discussed it, so this should be pretty easy for you. The cartoon and they said it was a, a TV cartoon and a Sega game with an earthworm whose name was Jim. It was Jim. Jim. Uh, earthworm Jim. And I did that. I did that last question. Like incredibly, I, I was there trying to read my really, really like poor handwriting. I was again like, get, like get, was that like shorthand or like I, I, I wrote that question like I was Yoda. I wrote it in Yoda speak. So it's all like back to front. I was like, what? What? what eh? <laughs> but yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Earthworm Yoda. Uh, eight out of ten. Wow. I mean, I thought I was going to do worse than that. That was. That was my best score so far, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Oh no, you've got an eight before, haven't you? You've got like you've, you've got sevens. Oh no, you got you got a six as well once, didn't you? But you got like sevens and yeah. eights. The rest of the time. Oh, I don't think I got. I think that was my best score, eight. Pretty sure it was. Oh, well, there you go. Well, I I think that's uh, I think that's everything that we've got. Um, We've challenged, we've challenged Dange uh, mentally, which is, and he's done incredibly well, considering that his brains are mel- melting out of his ass. Yeah, my um, brain, my brain is now physically throbbing from the pain. It's now hurting. Oh. So yeah, that's um, that's us done for another week. Um, I've, I, the, the, I can barely breathe in here. I need to, I need to go now. I need to open some windows. No um, where we are. I'm done in. Hey. Oh, it felt like we've been running a marathon today. Yeah, yeah. I I am kind of like sick of talking now. Yeah, yeah. There's just like <laughs> there's only the la- there's only that last few bits left to say. I th- I would think. Yeah. So bear with me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you're welcome. Goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from Dange. See you later, Dange. Yeah, I've got to go. I've got a uh, Super Scope competition to enter. Ooh, sweet. <laughs> All right, dude. I'll see you later, man. Good luck with that. I'll see you later, everyone else. Yep, see you later.
I think what flavor of these new Dunkin' Coconut Refreshers you get says a lot about you. Really? What's it say about me? Well, you got the refreshing golden peach because you're vibrant, fun, and positive. Oh, what about me? The bold purple pomegranate means you're vibrant, fun, and positive. I take it I got this delicious pink strawberry because I'm vibrant, fun, and positive. Yeah, it's a simple system, really. Share the shine. Enjoy a medium Dunkin' Coconut Refresher for $3. Order ahead plus earn rewards. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer includes classic Dunkin' Refreshers. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Oh, that's a cheer we used to do in softball. Uh, what? It's, uh, actually Geico's. Whenever someone hit a triple, we would wave our bats and yell, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. But we never got to use it because we would only hit home runs. Annoying. The phrase is from Geico because they help save people money. Geico? Yeah, they were our team sponsor. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.